We are on. Welcome back to episode 2.6 of Lock It In, presented by All Day Media. We are back for week six of the NFL after a very exciting and a great week five. Um, we had some good picks last week, and it's time to bounce back from the Immaculate Teaser after I absolutely sold it. And I forgot that if you play the Lions the week before, you're not going to have a good showing the following week. We'll talk about that more later on in the episode, but... Uh, Clark, Cobbs, you guys have anything that you want to speak your mind about? I missed the slate golfing, which I'm never doing again the rest mm. of the season. So. Yeah, dude, that sucks. Yeah. I didn't really learn anything new. I just hate Deshaun Watson even more. We'll get into it later. Resident Deshaun Watson hater. I mean, dude, he's a good guy. What did he do wrong? No, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> My buddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the stat is he has more lawsuit settlements than touchdown passes since we're having. By like three or four. It's four. <laughs> yeah, I think it's 23 to 19. It is. Not good. Not a good look. Yeah. Gross score, too, with a football game. All right. So we're on to week six. Great recap from the boys from week five. Let's get into the picks. Cobbs, who do you love this week? Yeah, so Lions were on by. I was on by. Now I'm back. <laughs> I love the Bengals minus three and a half at the Meadowlands taking on the Giants. Giants, fun win last week against the Seahawks. Like you just said, though, Seahawks, they've been banged up. They had a physical game against the Lions, got more banged up. Giants were able to take advantage, got the blocked field goal. You know, they they maybe could have lost that game in overtime. Bengals, the name of the game is points. They score points. They're fourth in the league in scoring points. The Giants are 27th. It's absolute must win for the Bengals. They're coming in here. They're winning by a touchdown. I, I'm very confident in this one. I, I'd almost lock it in, to be honest. Mm. I do, I do like buying the Bengals at this point in their season and also fading the Giants after that win. I mean, they don't look as bad as I thought they would, for sure. Daniel Jones actually, I mean, he's not worth $40 million a year, but he, he looked competent. But, uh, yeah, I think the Bengals are going get, to get things done uh, against the Giants this week. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to outpace him and no. Yeah, Cobbs, I think it's going to be a fun game. Uh, I'm I'm loving the Eagles minus nine and a half. Uh, the spread's been moving around a little bit, moved down to eight and a half. Now it's back to nine and a half. Uh, they're playing the Browns. Uh, I just, like, Deshaun Watson is just not it. I mean, he's he's averaging 4.8 yards per attempt this year. Uh, to just to put that in perspective, Bryce Young was averaging five and a half last season. He's, you know, been the laughing stock of quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, Deshaun Watson doesn't have a single 200-yard passing game in 2024 and not a single 300-yard passing game in his entire Browns career. Joe Flacco did that in five of six starts when he filled in last year. I mean, it's not just Deshaun Watson, though. I, like, the Browns' offensive line is allowing pressure on over 40% of their dropbacks. They gave up seven sacks last week to the Commanders, and I can't even name a single edge rusher on that team. And while their defense is supposed to be their strong point, I just don't see a world where they can keep up with the Eagles, who are adding Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown back to their lineup. Uh, Sirianni is also coaching for his job. I'm pretty sure they're 3-8 and eight in their last 11 games. They need a big win here. I get it. It's a lot of points. It's hard to win in this league, but Deshaun Watson sucks. The Browns suck. Fade me. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I get the logic. Well, first of all, though, there's one point you made that Joe Flacco is just elite. I think that we that's just Facts. been established. Yeah. Like, if you actually go and look, it's really impressive what he's done over the bulk of his career. Like the debate is over. He won a Super Bowl. He's he is elite. Forty. He's running for first downs. He's knocking Pam Oliver's fucking wig off. He's putting up thirty something <laughs> points. I mean, he's elite. He's just elite. I need to get used to the Browns sucking again because ten points from what their defense was last year, it's hard to take. But if you've seen that guy John Fanta on Twitter, oh, he's so funny, dude. Yeah, that Peter Griffin looking dude. <laughs> Just watch one of his videos, and you'll remember that the Browns are the old Browns again. Yeah, he's more than ticked off. He's past ticked off. Yeah, he's just laughing. Clark, you you bring up a lot of good points on that. I mean, as our resident Deshaun Watson hater, did you see the video? They wanted to go for it on that fourth down in the red zone. They're down by way more than kicking a field goal, and there's like 10 seconds left on the play clock. Deshaun Watson just starts walking off the field. I, I will actually give Deshaun credit. That was fake news from what I saw. They had 12 men on the field. Yeah, I was going to say that's, yeah, oh. I saw that. Yeah. See, he's a good guy. He's a great guy. Oh, no, I mean, I'm not going to rip on him entirely. <laughs> you know I mean? Like, it, it, you know, I'm not just going to, you know, that, it's fake news. It's fake news. Yeah, give us Jameis. Come on. We want Jameis. It'd be fun. We, we do want Jameis. But I, I, yeah. I, I'm not rooting for injuries, but we want Jameis. So. I love that. The Eagles minus nine and a half against the Browns. God, I hate the Browns. Their defense is not good either, but enough of that. I actually love the Texans minus seven this week. So they're playing the Patriots, and 
everybody had that stat week one where rookie quarterbacks have like covered one time in the last like 20 years in their first start ever. Caleb Williams actually ended up covering, although he didn't score a single offensive touchdown. Yeah, and I think covered for him. Right. I think he threw for less than a hundred yards. Needless to say, he did, you know, beat that stat. He's the anomaly for that one. It ain't happening this week in new England with Drake may as their quarterback. This podcast, we are Stroud boys through and through. D'Amico Ryans, he was able to handle Josh Allen last week, and I think he'll be able to handle Drake May and whatever weapons they don't have in New England. So, maybe the Texans minus seven. Yeah, I like that you brought up the Bears because I think that's a really good proxy to use for the Patriots because they have two things in common now. One, a rookie quarterback, and two, an abysmal offensive line. Exactly. We saw the Texans play against the Bears already. And I think what Caleb Williams was pressured, or no, he he was hit. I think on what seventy five percent of his dropbacks. I think it was like seventy six point three percent. Yeah, I mean he he was running for his life the entire game. So Drake May first career start. I mean he's going to get pegged. Unfortunately, I like Drake May. But <laughs> it, it's a bad spot for him. They should have let him spin his wheels last week against the fucking Dolphins. Dude, you're talking me into this. Love it even more. I might lock this in, but yeah, Mayo's uh, a moron, dude. I don't I don't know what he's doing. I don't understand the move. I mean, they obviously paid Jacoby Brissett to be a, a meat shield, and, and now <laughs> they're just they're just going to be eating that money. I don't I don't get it. Jacoby Speaking Brissett of, is the Kyle Lowry of the NFL. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're really getting after it on the, on the Lovett picks. It sounds like we should have made all these to lock it in, but <laughs> we're just so good, dude. Speaking of locking it in, I'm going to lock in first time of the year I've done this. So you can't say I'm biased. Lions minus three at Dallas. I don't need to tell you what happened. Dan Skipper is going to report as eligible. I, I'm sick of hearing Decker reported, so hopefully this puts it to bed. We win this game. We end the fucking narrative. But come on. Dallas, they've looked really disappointing. Michael Parsons is still highly questionable. They've got a bye week coming up after this, so I don't think they're going to force him to play if he's kind of on the fence, but we'll see. Either way, probably not at 100%. Drawn Bland on IR. They've really been getting exposed. Um in the passing game, we saw J-Mo, you know, get a big 50-plus yard play against them last year. Lions coming off the bye. They're healthy. They're ready to go. They obviously have a big chip on their shoulder from what happened last year. I think they're going to come into this place, kick their ass. It's golf in a dome. Mm. You got all the stories on their side. I mean, yeah, dude, the storylines. Really not covering this. The storylines are there, and, I mean, honestly, the Lions are just clicking these last couple weeks, and the Cowboys have really struggled. So that's all I need to take Lions. Yeah, I mean, it's literally contained CD. If you can keep him under 200 yards this time, you're winning the game. Love it, Cobbs. Uh, I'm locking in the uh, over in the Falcons-Panthers game. Uh, I just can't seem to stay away from this Panthers team with Andy Dalton. Uh, we're targeting two not-so-great defenses. I mean, the Panthers are abysmal. They're both... Both teams are bottom four and third down stop rate, and they're giving up a combined 56 points per game. Uh, I don't think we have to worry about the Falcons putting up points, you know, with the Panthers' defense. I think it's really a case for, you know, if the Panthers will be able to score. The Falcons are giving up the fourth most rush yards in the league per game. I'm anticipating that Chuba Hubbard is going to be able to get it going, and that sets up the play-action pass for Andy Dalton. Kind of seems like Xavier Leggett's being used in a fun role. Deontay Johnson's getting open a lot. I mean, this Falcons offense just put up 500 yards of offense last Thursday. You combine that with this Panthers team that doesn't have a great defense and they should be able to exploit their opponent's weaknesses. I think it's a recipe for points. I've had Chuba Hubbard on my uh, dynasty bench for like three years, hoping that he would finally, you know, show up to what his college expectations were. And turns out his name is not Chuba, it's Chuba, but he actually, this year is the year. He looks yeah, good. He's, he's been good. He's been good. Keeping the seat warm for uh, Jonathan Brooks. Hmm. I'm wondering if they just hand the keys to John. Uh, I, like uh, Chuba's looking like he should be used. Yeah, I think they'll ease him in. But conversation for a couple weeks from now. So that's the over forty-eight and a half. It's forty-six and a half right now. Forty-six and a half. That's a good spot. Yeah, I'll take the over. Uh, I'm locking in the Bucks minus three and a half. So another rookie QB stat. Spencer Rattler getting his first start with the Derek Carr injury. The Bucks offense just looks awesome. They've been actually clicking and, and firing on all cylinders these last couple weeks. And um, the Saints are averaging less than 17 points per game in their last three games. And that's 18 points per dome. For those of you at home counting the points per dome, they are in a dome. But the Bucks minus three and a half. Again, rookie QB. Divisional matchup should be able to beat them by at least a field goal. They're minus three and a half. But I'll take Baker, Mayfield, and the boys. Yeah. And 
I mean, they've got a bone to pick too. After they kind of got jobbed, it felt like in that uh, Atlanta game. Like, how did they have enough time to spike that ball? Yeah, it was one second left, right? Yeah, but it just it didn't seem like there were seven seconds when they ran the play. It just didn't seem like there was enough time to do all that. So they got a bone to pick. I like it. Not just rookie QB, but rookie QB who was a fifth round pick in his first career start. You can't forget this is also the uh, you know the semi annual tradition of Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore getting in a fight and both getting suspended. That'll be a fun sideshow. Nice. The so semi annual tradition. Props. Speaking of props, though, anytime touchdown. I really tested fate last week trying to take the backup running back in Antonio Gibson. He had a good game. He just didn't get as many carries as the Mayo man implied. But we've now established, as we said earlier in this episode, that he's a moron. So (laughs) speaking of other moronic coaches, we're going to take a player on the Bears because they're playing the Jags. I'm going with Roshan Johnson anytime touchdown. He started Mm, to get more calls. Getting, yeah, 9.30 a.m. London game. He started to get more involved getting the goal line carries. The Jags have allowed a rushing touchdown in every game. Two of them happen to be Stephon Diggs and Deshaun Watson, but that's besides the point. They've allowed a rushing touchdown every week, and yeah, I think the value is going to be good. That's pretty much all I got. I mean, the Jags D stinks, and so, Roshan has been getting goal line touches. Yeah, what happened with Swift that Roshan started getting the touchdown, the goal line touches? Swift actually has gone off the last two weeks. I know, but I mean, I, I've noticed that too. I agree with you. Roshan Johnson is getting a lot more touches near the end zone, but they just happened out of nowhere, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I think he's more of the archetype for short yardage running. I mean, he's just a lower runner than Swift is, but I don't know. Fair enough. You'll probably get some good value on that. Yeah, that's what I mean, just because it's kind of a split backfield. The main point is the Jags D is not good. So. I like it. I'm on Tony P in Tennessee Ooh. on anytime TD this week. You know, he's still getting the bulk of the carries and his timeshare with Ty J Spears, uh, and they're playing against the Colts, who just gave up 37 points to the bottom-dwelling Jags that Jacobs just mentioned. You know, we're expecting Anthony Richard- Richardson to start in this one, and it's been a very rough start to you know the season so far. Uh, I just think that the Titans defense, uh, it's they're giving up the least total yards per game. I think they're going to make life a living hell for Anthony Richardson and force him into some errors that are going to set up the Titans offense to succeed, at least to get Tony P in the end zone. I guess I'm not sure that Will Levis will be able to give him a whole lot of opportunities, hoping there's a, a couple built in from Richardson there. But uh, I'm, I'm liking Tony P this week. Tony P in Tennessee. Clark is on. So... We're going back to a white tight end for my anytime touchdown score. I want to say I'm like one in five, but this one I feel really good about. We're going Sam Laporta. He has not scored yet this year. I'm sure that there'll be a plus sign in front of his value. And this is going to be a very high scoring game. The over under is 52 and a half. And um, yeah, just a white tight end scoring against the Dallas Cowboys defense. Obviously we have a huge backfield with Montgomery and Gibbs, but I can see Laporta getting in after a bye week and him having some rest and uh, some time to scheme up some plays from the boy Ben Johnson. Yeah, I actually was really close to taking that, but I didn't want to double dip on that game, to be honest. I actually like that the best. Of the I actually three. wrote down Jake Ferguson, but switched to the other white tight end last minute. So well, I mean, I could definitely see them both scoring. But, I mean, Laporta scored 10 touchdowns last season. You're right. I mean, way less involved this year, but he's been nursing – He had a hamstring injury kind of late in training camp. Mm. So he's kind of had two injuries. Now he's got some extended time off, get nice and rested up. Yeah, off a bye, he's he's relaxing and chilling. Meanwhile, Rum Rum Ra is at the Tigers game, having a great time. Yeah, which, by the way, sweet Tigers game. One more to the AOCS. Um, This is not a Tigers podcast. This is a Lock It In podcast where we get propolicious and where we – try to pick a teaser that is so perfect that it cannot lose that it is immaculate and that we pick three teams which the last two weeks somehow found a way to lose but this week we're gonna go three and oh and did i mention that it's immaculate Cobbs, who do you got all right i'm going against the grain a little bit the most popular team in the league who is it right now probably yes and that's why we're taking Mm. the ravens you buy the six points on the tees, it's basically money line minus a half. It's in Baltimore. The Ravens 
they started 0-2, and, and now everyone's like, oh, they're the Super Bowl favorite. But for some reason, the darling of the league right now – well, I mean, I know the reason. The darling of the league right now is the Commanders. It's awesome. Jay Daniels is sweet. They're calling him baby Lamar Jackson, but that's exactly <laughs> what he is. He's baby Lamar Jackson, and the reigning MVP Lamar Jackson is about to show him who's the fucking boss. They're not going to lose this game at M&T Bank Stadium in their own house against the commander's defense that is bottom of the barrel. They're giving up way too many points. You saw what happened when the Ravens got into a shootout last week. The commanders, they did beat the Bengals, but come on. They don't have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. I don't think there is much of a firepower match as what the Ravens just pulled out last week. They're going to win. Ravens are going to win. Dude, I feel like so many people are going to be on the commander's plus six and a half here. That's why I like it more. Yeah, hundred percent. Love that, Cobbs. Uh, I'm, I'm teasing the Cardinals. It's uh, it's plus eleven right now. This just seems like way too many points for a, a team with a frankly good offense. I mean, mm-hmm. top twelve in scoring, uh, and they're playing the Packers, who I mean, they they could have very easily lost that game to the Rams if they were able to convert in the red zone at just you know once or twice, kicked a field goal. That game would have been a lot different at the end. So I, I'm Jordan Love is also throwing an uh, interception every game. You know, he's, he's playing kinda, reckless. That's what I was going to say. Reckless. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, cards but with double digit points built in. Come on, hundred percent. And it's in Green Bay, but at this time of the year, it's not like the frozen tundra in October is probably be like fifty five and sunny. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I Kyle's love giving the Cardinals waddle. eleven. You said what? Cobb's going to be waddling around. He'll be yes, he will. So. To finish off the Immaculate Teaser, we're going to take the Colts plus eight and a half. So, Will Levis is the other quarterback, and this is a divisional matchup. We're going to keep it close. I honestly would love this a lot more if Joe Flacco was starting because he is elite. Hopefully, Anthony Richardson will go out with a concussion or something, even though we don't root for injuries. But plus eight and a half, give me that all day in a divisional matchup with Will Levis as your quarterback. Colts plus eight and a half, that's not losing. Yeah, I wish you could just bet the over on total turnovers in that game. Because <laughs> if you, you, you might be onto something there. Yeah, because uh, if you talk to any University of Tennessee Volunteers fan, they will tell you that these two QBs are a mirror image of each other. They they both just don't know how to take care of the football. So, you know what we should take: Colts defense or Titans defense touchdown. Probably better than Titans. Yeah, defense. round round. Lots man. of value there was something else. So that was a bonus propolicious. You're taking the defensive touchdown for the Colts or for the Titans because this is going to be a brutal quarterback game. But the Colts plus 8.5 is a lock. The Cardinals plus 11.5 is a lock. And the Ravens to beat the Commanders is an absolute lock. Cobbs, if you could think of one word to describe that teaser, what would you use? That teaser is cashing. That's the word I got because that teaser is going to fucking hit. Bang. That is it. We are on. Thank you for tuning in to week six of Lock It In presented by All Day Media. We'll catch you next week for 2.7. Lock it in.